Please welcome Bill de Blasio. Um, Bill de Blasio is a, is a public advocate for the city of New York. Welcome. Uh, you are talking to a group of about a thousand passionate foodies, people who are deeply devoted to trying to improve our food system, make sure everybody gets fed adequately, yes. and that we have a food system that is good for people and the planet. So we have, you, you've been, the ground rules have been explained. Yes. You have about a minute and a half to answer the questions, and off we go. My first one is about Hunts Point. Uh, the Hunts Point produce market provides nearly two-thirds of the city's fresh fruits and vegetables, but it's been um, over capacity for decades and is in bad need of redevelopment. Anybody who's been there can say that. Fixing it requires thinking about how the market could provide jobs and food for the neighborhood in which it resides, uh, how it could reduce pollution, promote regional food, and be part of a much broader vision for food in New York City. Um, what's your vision for the Hunts Point market? And as mayor, how would you get to that vision? Well, thank you, Mary, and thanks to the New School. Thank you to all of the sponsors. Many people in this room, many organizations I've had the honor of fighting shoulder to shoulder with uh, for food security in this town over the last 12 years. So I just want to thank the extraordinary movement, and by the way, a movement that put the food issue on the map in New York City over the last decade or so. Congratulations for that incredibly important achievement. Yes. Uh, to me, uh, one of the things we all have to do as progressives, as activists, is start to connect the notion of uh, environmental sustainability, um, food supply sustainability, with economic sustainability, and recognize that a lot of what we're going to be doing in the future is figuring out how to live on this earth more appropriately, and that, in fact, there are a lot of jobs that come out of that. If we help to reorient over time the Hunts Point market uh, to produce uh, that's grown near to New York City, just like I think we need to reorient in the purchasing uh, approach of New York City government, our schools and all the agencies buy food to uh, local produce to the maximum extent possible. I think it's going to have a profound effect uh, on employment patterns, on climate, et cetera. Hunt's point we need to save in New York City. We need to, to redevelop it and make it uh, more sustainable for the long term. But, uh, and there's incredible employment opportunities with it. But the bottom line to me is I want a Hunts Point market that's reoriented over time to produce from uh, our broader tri-state area as part of an overall effort to wean us off a culture of produce from 3,000 miles away. Yeah. The next question is about school food. Um, New York City schools serve about 850,000 uh, students a day, but the school meals face two problems, low participation rates, and lots of complaints about the quality of the food. Um, some of that is standard. Some of that is kids. Some of that is kids. I have teenagers. Some, some of that, that is teenagers. Is um, sourcing local and sustainable foods could help a lot, but few schools have the facilities or the staff who can deal with fresh foods from scratch. Some of us would love to see universal school meals, uh, breakfast in the classroom, and an investment in building kitchens and in training food service staff. As mayor, what would you do to increase participation in the program and improve the quality of the school meals? Uh, first of all, I think I think we're missing an opportunity to use available federal funding to make school lunches free. And I think we have to end any stigma around school lunches and universalize it. It's crucial. Second, I, you know, I actually respect Bloomberg administration policies on public health greatly and continue the vast majority of them, but I disagree fundamentally on the breakfast issue. We have to get food in kids' hands. We have too many hungry kids in this city. We have too many kids who are not learning because they're hungry and are not getting quality food. That is much more pressing from my point of view. There are valid concerns about obesity, but we have to lean into school breakfast and make that universal. That's crucial for the future of this city. In terms of the quality, uh, there's no question, again, a constant movement towards local agriculture, local produce is gonna help in quality and taste and everything. We all know that inherently. And I think the investments we make uh, to make food, uh, good quality food, more appealing to our young people are very good ones. So I think some of the capital funding 
uh, to update our cafeterias. I'm someone who believes we need to put proportionally more capital funding into schools. Let's be clear. It will come from somewhere else in our capital budget. But I think the investment in schools is necessary at this point, including the cafeteria upgrades that would allow us to provide a healthier, more appetizing kind of food for our kids. All of that taken together, I think, revolutionizes our approach to getting kids the healthy food they need. Oh, well, thank you for that. Um, the, um, the next question is about the governance of food in New York City. We have multiple agencies doing multiple aspects of the food system. We have a coordinator at the level of the mayor's office, and there's a task force. But many of the groups here feel that that's not enough, that it's not coordinated enough, and that they don't have access or understand enough about what's going on, and they would like input into city policies and programs. Um, as mayor, would you support broader governance of food functions and a process that encourages citizen participation? Yes, very much so. Look, I, as I said, there's areas where I agreed with the mayor and some of his public health and environmental policies. There's many, many other areas where I've disagreed. And I think one of the greatest uh, gaps, one of the greatest problems in the Bloomberg years was there were not a respect for stakeholders in this city. The Bloomberg administration was the ultimate elitist uh, administration, a top-down approach to government, not understanding that New York City is actually a city of stakeholders that right now are making change on the ground and bettering people's lives way ahead of the government. And it's time for the government to recognize that and start listening to the stakeholders. There's also the Bloomberg administration was not particularly keen on transparency. Uh, and I think uh, putting up the metrics, constantly showing how many kids are we feeding lunch to? How many kids are we feeding breakfast to? How many folks are on food stamps versus those who should be on food stamps that we're still not reaching and why? You know, what quality, what kind of food are we bringing into our schools and our other city facilities? I think all of this needs to be very transparent. And I would say this, what I learned from the years I worked as a staffer in City Hall, um, it's great to have a coordinator it is much better to have a deputy mayor charged with the responsibility. If you really want focus and impact, there has to be a deputy mayor who among their responsibilities is coordination of all food policies, and it has to be a very public mandate to actually bring these policies into alignment for the greatest effect for our people. If it's just a coordinator, it will not have the same effect. Someone with real power needs to govern over moving our food policies forward. So you would appoint such a person? One of the deputy mayors, of which there are typically five, maybe mm -hmm. six, in my administration would have clear responsibility for coordinating all those areas. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for that. Are we ready for the community question? We are ready for the community question. Hello, my name is Derricka Crookshank, and I'm from the Low East Side, NYCHA Housing, and I would just like to ask a question. Speak what, into the microphone, please. What plans do you have for implementing changes to allow more stores to have food stamp access? Mm -hmm. uh, look, I, I think this is the story of this last decade or so, and a lot of, again, people in this room participated, and I was very proud to be actively involved as chairman of the General Welfare Committee in the council and then as advocate. The story is, finally recognizing what a powerful role the city could play in getting more and more people access to SNAP. Um, the technological piece of it, making sure that stores, green markets, et cetera, all were outfitted to have um, the technological capacity, that was part of the equation. But I still, th and I would further that effort and keep working to make sure that any, uh, any place that food is sold to people that doesn't yet have that technology, the city should be actively involved in making sure uh, it's available. But I still think the bigger piece to achieve is to reach the, the many, many tens of thousands of people who still who qualify for SNAP and aren't getting it, and to change the still very burdensome approach the city takes. We just, we just got finished demonizing uh, food stamp participation through fingerprinting. That was a decade-long struggle. Um, but there's still a struggle to make it easy and accessible through all of the ways that government reaches people, and that's what I'd focus on. Great. We, it turns out we have time for another question. Um, so I'm going to ask about, about the city's procurement ability. Um, the city buys a lot of food in lots and lots of different ways, and uh, hundreds of millions of dollars worth. And yet it doesn't seem to be coordinated in a way, and it also isn't used very purposefully. Would you, as mayor, try to reorganize the procurement process to try, for example, to promote regional and and local uh, agriculture or getting food in from areas around the city? 
Absolutely. We, we have an opportunity here. L let me just make clear, you know, the biggest city in the country, the, the strongest city government, we have an, a huge impact on the market. And, and it's not a shocker that in the Bloomberg years that capacity wasn't utilized because the, the mayor really had a kind of laissez-faire approach um, to the economic role of government. I take a very opposite approach. I think New York City can be a market maker. I think we can focus our spending power on produce from our region. And, and work with other cities to do the same and really start to change the approach in this country. If we want to address climate change, if we want to address the many, many problems created by consumerism in this culture, and start to align ourselves to what we're going to need to do in the future. We're going to have to change market dynamics. You know, a, a few years ago, I proposed the notion the mayor's picked on, up on recently of a styrofoam ban. And people said, well, what about the alternatives? You know, they're expensive, there's relatively few kinds. And I said, if New York City jumps in and starts purchasing on a large level the kind of uh, organic options available, we won't need styrofoam anymore. Those options will become cheap, they'll become plentiful, and we'll work with other cities around the country and change the culture, change the reality. We can do this if we start to break the back of produce from 3,000 miles away, if we start to create the notion that local produce can be affordable and it's the only way to go for the future of our environment and our health, we will change this country for the long haul. We can do that in New York City. Um, <clears throat> Please join me in thanking Bill de Blasio Thank for Thank you, everyone. Together. Thank you for the work you do. Thank you.